but there's no code behind file. But at the very least, the validation will work. So if I put that in, it tells me that there's a missing operand. If I put garbage in there, it tells me it must be a number. If I put values in all these, it works without a validation error. Questions up to this point? That app settings that you just drag into your web config file. Yep. Is that something that you, I mean, how, why couldn't you generate that internally versus? I'm not, I'm not following the question. I'm just trying to understand why you had to hop to the other file to grab it. Because I didn't have that code memorized. And I knew that it worked on Thursday of last week, so I'm, I'm just going to copy it from there to there. In other words, if I, if I, if I remembered off the top of my head what, that, what, that, uh, what those lines of code were, I could just type them in. But I don't remember what those are. Okay, so for these validators, we should be grabbing that chunk. Yep. For the, okay. Exactly. So all of this, if we use validators, we need to put that... If you use the validators in the manner that I'm doing it, yes, you would need to do that. I did not make the um, range validators have, or the compare validators have, um, the dynamic display, so I'll go and do that. And just to make it look like it did on the board, I will go in and I'll put an equal sign before the answer. Now when I run this, this operator this equals this. And I have my button to check. I get my validation error. So we have the GUI to looking kind of like I intended it to. And we have all the validations in place too. processing behind it and there's no um, checking to see if I got the right answer or anything like that, but all the GUI elements are in place. Now I need to populate that drop down. All right. And I'm going to go here. Unbound means that this is not tied to the database. Now, we haven't talked about that yet, so for the first few examples, they're all going to be unbound. At some point, we're going to learn how to tie this to a database. So that, for example, if we were creating a search um, of students, one of the columns in the student table might be major, and we might have a drop-down that showed the list of all the majors that are on campus. All right? And we could then select major from the list of drop-downs of the list of all majors on campus and go into a search based on that. Now, we wouldn't want that code hard-coded like we're going to code these in. Because what we'd want to have happen is if the college added another major, for it to automatically populate that. So this is sort of foreshadowing what's going to come uh, again later on uh, in the course. But for now, we're simply going to hard-code values into the drop-down. So I'll go in here and I'll say edit items and I'll add and text I'll make a plus sign and the value I'll make plus. I'm just doing that really to stress the fact that the text should be something that's meaningful to the user. And the script is going to be using the values, um, the value as opposed to the text. 
Let's just do plus and minus. All right. So now we can go in and can put in 2 plus 3 equals 44. Click our button. Doesn't do anything. All right. It's not correct, obviously, but we haven't hooked that button up to any sort of C-sharp code to do any sort of calculation or anything like that and check to see if our answer is correct. All right. So what I'm going to do is this. All right. I'm going to go in and I'm going to create my code behind. Now, keep in mind that that code behind is only going to run on the server. So until that form gets submitted by the client to the server, this code isn't going to run. What is going to make the client submit the form to the server? That button is. That's the submit button. So when we click on that, that's going to submit the form to the server. So I can double click the button as a shortcut. And what that will do is that will create a button click event that I can write code to. And it's a button click event, again, that's going to run on the server. Now the implication of this is that assuming the JavaScript is enabled, if there's any validation errors, this code does not get run because we do not make it to the server. All right, so a, a proper submitting of the form has to occur for this to run. All right, if you remember from last time, we talked about the possibility of JavaScript not being enabled, in which case the validation is going to fire off, and it will try to do this code anyhow, unless we put in if is valid. And I'm having flashbacks to when this class is taught in Visual Basic. If is valid, then I want to do that code. Let's review the syntax of an if statement for those of you that may have not seen an if statement in this format before in C sharp. Starts with the word if. Has in parentheses a Boolean expression. Now, what is a Boolean expression? A Boolean expression is one that evaluates to either true or false. Now, in this case, the variable is valid is already a Boolean. Is valid is an attribute of the page. And the framework automatically sets this attribute to either be true or false. This attribute will be true if all the validation for the page got passed. It will be false if any one of the validations failed. So we don't have to worry about setting this as valid flag. This is part of the deal. You get this for free when you use the ASP.NET framework. Remember I said the, the one advantage of using a framework is it does some of the processing for you and does some of the stuff for you and sort of gives you something to build on. Well, you don't have to worry about setting this variable because the framework handles that. Now, you just need to test that variable because if it's not valid, you don't want to process this. So, we can go in and say if is valid, then we want to do this. The Boolean evaluates to true or false. If the, if the Boolean evaluates to true, we do the stuff in the braces immediately following. The braces in C-sharp, as you notice, are used to group things together. So, for example, the start of the class is started with this brace. The ending brace indicates the end of the, uh, end of the, 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 the class. The start of the function starts with a brace. The ending function, end part of the function, ends with a brace. Start of function, end of function. Likewise, the true block of an if statement is enclosed in the braces. 
Okay, so what do we want to do if this is clicked? All right, we want to calculate the answer, right? So I'm going to create a variable for the answer, a double, I'm going to call it answer. Now, what is the answer? Well, we don't know. Are we adding or are we subtracting? All right. We have to determine what option was selected in the, the drop-down. Right. What are the options in the drop-down? Well, plus or minus. So, we have to determine which of those options was selected. The way this code is written, it can't be anything else, right? It's always going to be one of those two. Remember, a drop-down on an HTML page always has a value. So if we haven't specified a value, it's going to be the first one on the list. So we have to determine if it's been, um, you know, if, if, the, if the, the option selected was plus or the option selected was minus. How do we determine that? Well, we know what object we want to look at, right? We want to look at that drop-down list. We want to look at one of the characteristics of that drop-down list, namely, what is the value that has been selected? All right? Now, here's where IntelliSense comes in very handy, because I can do this. If drop-down operator, and when I type in the period, it shows me a list of all the properties associated with a drop-down list. So these are all the, all the attributes, all the properties associated. And there's a bunch of them. The background color, the border color, blah, blah, all these things down the line. The one that we're interested in, if we scroll down to the bottom, is selected value. All right? Do keep in mind we could get the answer a couple different ways. You could pick selected item. What's the difference between the two? Selected item gives you an item object. Selected value gives you a string. All right? We just want to know the string that's been selected, not the item, which is a, a combination of the, the value and the text. So I want to look at the selected value of this. And I want to test it to see if it's equal to plus. All right. 
We use a dot notation where we give the object that we're interested in a dot and then the particular property that we're interested in. Now, I don't expect you to have all the properties memorized, but you should get to, you get to know the common properties for the common things. Like you shouldn't have to look it up with IntelliSense every single time. For a drop down, the property that you're typically going to be interested in is going to be the selected value, because that tells you which value got selected. That tells you which option was chosen. And if that's the case, then I can say, Answer equals, answer equals what? Answer Pardon me? Answer well, the, the operand 1 plus operand 2. How do I grab the value from the operand 1? Well, what's it called? It's called txt operand 1. Is that enough? No. Because there's a lot of properties associated with an operand, uh, uh, with a text box, right? We press the dot, we can see all those slew of properties, some of them very similar to with the drop-down list. And the one that we're interested in is text. Plus txt operand to dot text. Okay. That gave me a little big red squiggly line and you kind of have an idea that that's not good. Right? What is wrong with this statement? You're trying to add two strings together. Yeah. A text box is just that. A text box. But wait, we're, we're validating it to make sure that it's a number. Doesn't matter. Uh, a text control, a text box control, the text property is a string because a string could be in there. Who knows? There could be other code that disables that validation, all right, for whatever reason. So the compiler knows that this could be a troublesome expression. Therefore, we have to fix it, all right? And how do we fix it? Pardon me? Convert. To double. And then we put in parentheses. Now we're in business. All right. I'm going to do something similar if it is minus. Now I know what some of you might be thinking. You might be thinking, shouldn't I do an else if and all that? You certainly could, but you know what? This is such a small amount of code that in my mind, to increase the readability of it, sometimes it's better just to make separative statements. You'll lose a fraction of a tiny micro split second, all right? But who cares? It's readability and it might save you headaches later on. And the difference, of course, would be do this minus that. All right. So now we have to compare, right, to see if the answer keyed in equals the answer that was calculated, right? Because all we've done so far is calculate what the correct answer should be. We now have to test to see if the answer that was keyed in is the answer that is was calculated. So I'm going to go and I'm going to say if answer equals 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 because we're going to compare it with something. And what am I going to compare it to? I'm going to compare it to the value of the answer text box. 
txt answer dot text. Squiggly line again. What do you think it's doing? Again, I'm comparing a double to a string. Those of you that have done some coding in other environments, like Visual Basic or, or even JavaScript, some languages do what's called implicit conversion. In other words, it says, you want to add together two strings, and, or you want to multiply together two strings? Fine, I'll do that. We'll, we'll give it a shot. We'll see if it works. There happens to be numbers in there, and you got the answer? Great. That's how JavaScript would work, for example. And depending on your settings in Visual Basic, that's how it would work. Um, that actually is not a good thing. All right? That actually, you think that that's good. It's like, oh, boy, it does that for me. You really want to have control over this. And therefore, you really want to make sure that you're very cognizant of the data types and you're doing the conversions that need to be converted. We can then go in and we can, and we haven't, we won't, we haven't talked about this yet, but we could put in exception processing to say, what if it gets to this point and that text box doesn't contain a number? Well, we can then control what happens as opposed to letting the, the compiler or the interpreter take a shot at it and, and try to come up with some sort of answer. All right, so I'm going to compare the answer that was keyed in to the answer that's in the text box. And if it's equal, then the person got it right. <sighs> Otherwise, the person got it wrong. So what I could do is I could do some things as <laughs> set the label answer equals label answer dot text equals Congratulations. Try again. All right. So now we have this and we can run it and we can try it. And it, validation should still work. If we put in a value, 1 plus 1 equals 1, and click that, click the button, tells us try again. If we get the right answer, tells us that we're correct. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rearrange the button and, and that guy. I'm going to put the button before the label. Alright. Question. The, the text boxes mm -hmm. where you entered your numbers, mm -hmm. I, I see how you're referring to them. But within the Where you, when you initially placed the text boxes, uh, did they have, you're referring to them by the ID name? I'm assuming. I have, I'm just trying to get a handle on how you're referring to what's been entered into those text boxes. Okay. How do we figure out what's been entered into the text box? Well, that's this function, right? Because this is a function that does the processing when it's clicked. Okay. And how do we figure it out? Well, we refer to the name of the text box. Name of the text box dot text. That's the equivalent of saying the contents of the text box. So it's whatever the ID was. This part of it points it at that text box. All right, so we're referring to that operand one text box. But that's not enough, right? Because that text box is an object. 
it has a bunch of properties. Which one am I interested in? Well, in this case, I'm interested in the contents of that text box, and therefore, I'm interested in the text attribute of that. So, okay, I see how you're, re you're referring to what's been entered or selected. And I know you mentioned that that, that button does the actual submitting to the server. Should be a capital T, by the way. Yeah. So, um, I just want to actually see the, 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 the code, uh, excuse me, uh, I guess the, the, the wording actually that does the actual sending. To that well, there is no wording by virtue of the fact that this button is an ASP.NET button. Okay. And when we run this, that ASP button gets translated on the HTML side, gets translated to a submit button. That's what causes the form to be submitted when you press that button. In other words, that's just what submit buttons do, is they submit the form somewhere up here is a form. Submit the form to whatever script is mentioned here. And in this case, the script that is mentioned is the very page itself. This is called a post back. The page actually posts back to itself to do the processing. Seeing how it gets translated makes sense in terms of submitting and where it's submitting to. I, I guess going back to the original ASP.NET, it's, it's just, you, you said it was implied that it's submitted? Um, it's not implied. That, that's what submit buttons do is they submit forms, right? I mean, forget ASP.NET, write something in PHP or write something in any language. If you have a submit button, what happens when you click it? It gets some, the form gets submitted. So that's an HTML thing. Yeah, uh, like I said, but like I said, normally we're, we're doing the, the routing and whatnot. I, I guess, so once you, once you actually physically placed in that button, that, that was it in terms of the, the work file you just had? I, I'm not following the question. Submit button, submit the form. So by putting a button on the page, when that button gets clicked, the form is going to get submitted. But typically you wouldn't have to save what happens when you get submitted. But we did. We just took the defaults for it. In other words, if we look at this, We have our form ID, all right, and we have no, one of the attributes of that form ID is the action, in other words, the script that processes it, because we didn't put an action in, the action is to submit it back to itself. So yeah, we, we, we set it, we set it by taking the defaults. Is he, are you asking, like, where you get the code, or what? Uh, well, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to physically make the leap as to what tells the button to submit it. Because it's a submit button. When you click it. That's yeah, okay, when, so when you click it. Can I see the wording that's, that, that, that's connected that's to that? The, uh, it's built into the dot it's net. Built in. It is not even built in. The, I mean, it, okay, let, let me try to answer this. An ASP.NET control gets translated to an to an HTML submit button. And what you're looking for is the on-click event. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And we don't click to get that. Well, now if your question is what invokes that code on the server when it's clicked, that's a different question. All right. If you're asking, like, what submits it, that submits it. What causes this code to occur? Well, we've clicked that button. 